on, Jack. Give us a flap. Are you playing hard to get, lady? <laughs> you are too cool for school, aren't you? you are rather precariously balanced. If you topple, you're going to end up in the poo litter. Just saying. So, good morning. This morning, that was a little walk that I took you on this morning. Um, after eating that delicious Moroccan shepherd's pie last night, I had a really bad night. <laughs> this is going to be way too much information, but you've already seen me in my gym jams and my slippers, so pff, what the hell? Um, if I eat beans, they make my stomach feel really bad. And last night I had a really bad stomach, and I had to get up a couple of times in the night, and it was just I I kind of I've had it the last probably two months, um, and certainly since we've been since this whole virus has been coming our way. My eating patterns have been horrendous. My diet has been horrendous. I know that my body works best when I eat a low carb diet. I have not been eating low carb at all. I have been gorging on all the foods that I know make me feel bad. And I'm kind of done. Last night was just like the cherry on the cake, so to speak. Um, so I woke up this morning, I put on a fresh cleanly washed pair of jeans that I struggled to do up uh, so yeah the whole not going to the gym and eating like crap has, has now caught up with me so it's time to stop all that nonsense so this morning that little walk was me going out on my allowed daily wander uh, it was only 30 minutes this morning I did a little route of some country lanes I didn't see any cars or anyone it was really lovely so I am now going to build that into my everyday to do half an hour at least of movement that gets my um, heart pumping a little bit faster. I've been really lazy and sedentary and I was kind of in my head I was thinking oh well I'm gardening I don't need to do exercise when I'm gardening but like I haven't gardened for days and when I am I'm generally sat on my butt pulling up weeds by that way which is not exactly heavy digging or anything is it let's be honest so yes time to get me off the sugar so the next week I'm probably gonna be a right grumpy cow so you might want to ignore me for the next couple of weeks and then pop back when I'm feeling all happy and jolly and my stomach is better <laughs> so I just thought I'd pop out quickly do my little poo picking session whilst yesterday's video is uploading for you today so I hope you enjoyed the tour of Johnny's van I know a lot of you have been dying to see what he's got up to with that van so yeah he was he was really really looking forward to showing it off as well which is cool really good so that's me done in here that looks better there's another monster one probably another double yoker that's got my name on it <laughs> That egg, that's got a hole in it, not because somebody's pecked it, just because that's how it's been laid. So that one is still edible, that'll still be fine to eat, but I do need to eat that one up today. Hey Squeak, how are you? Hello pretty girl. We need to feed those chickens, they're hungry. <laughs> Anyone would think I starved you lot. Pretty black cat.
I've just snuck over to see my mommy and look, she's hiding behind the door. <laughs> Oh, this is so weird. All I want to do is hug my mummy. But I did phone first because I wanted to come and show you the seedlings that she's got going for us. So gorgeous, she's got the funniest writing. So we've got a tomato over here. That's called red brandy wine, I think. We've got a courgette, which black beauty by the looks of things. Uh, what does that say? That's a sunflower, apparently. Who? Oh, it's sunflowers for the chickens. Oh, they're so spoiled. Um, so she's growing lentils. They're looking amazing. Aren't they sweet? This is more sunflowers. These are my spaghetti squash. Don't they look amazing? Wow, so excited to get them in the ground. These are, you American mother. <laughs> These are courgette, not zucchini. They're called courgettes. <laughs> oh, I've just realized I'm touching these sticks. Don't touch these for a couple of days. <laughs> uh, we've got, oh God, what does that say? Cucumber, huh? Cucumber, yeah. Oh, this monster here, this is a pumpkin. Um, these are just mixed pumpkins, apparently. Uh, kale. And what are you? <laughs> Mummy says that's cucumber. <laughs> All our houseplants have been thrown on the floor because it's far more important that we grow food right now. Doesn't that look fab though? I can't wait to get them up in the allotment. Thanks, Mum. Bye. This is my lunch. These are vegetarian sausages. They are these ones. Heck, veg with edge. Now this does work out to be 18 carbs just with these two sausages, but they were sat in the fridge. They were gonna go bad. I had to use them. I'm not wasting them. So I've got 18 grams of carbs here, frying them in a little bit of homemade lard. I've got one of those low dough flatbread wrap weird polystyrene things. This is one of the most depressing meals I think I've ever eaten. Okay, this is my little science experiment. Last summer, we went to Port Elliot Festival in Cornwall and part of my birthday present, my birthday was at the festival, which is very cool. Part of my Prezi, Johnny got me a workshop for making kombucha and I'd never even tasted kombucha. I'd heard about it. It's basically a sweet fermented tea um, and the bacteria eats the sugar. It kind of lives on the sugar and it makes this fermented tea, which is supposed to be incredibly good for you. You can buy it in all the cool cafes by little glass bottles. They're really expensive. And I fancied having a go. So these are my kombuchas from last year. This is my main one. So this is the SCOBY Hotel. These weird slimy things on top are the SCOBYs. Um, I'll pick one up in a minute, but I need to wash my hands properly before I do that. Uh, so yeah, they're like gelatinous, membrane-y weirdnesses. I've had these four jars in my kind of pantry uh, all winter. It's not very warm in there. It's probably the warmest and most stable temperature in our house, but it's not particularly warm. So I just left them and I'm keeping my fingers crossed. These three all look fine. This one looks different and it looks weird. I don't know if it's supposed to look like that. I am not an expert. I know very, very little about this. Like I say, July last year was when I started playing around with kombucha. So 
what I think I'm going to do today is I'm going to make some more hot sweet tea, cool it down and then feed them because these guys haven't had sugar since I'm guessing, yeah, since uh, September of last year and it is now March of the following year. So they're probably really hungry. <laughs> so I'm going to make them some more sweet tea, feed them. Um, and then just leave them, I guess, for a couple of weeks um, and then come back to them. Um, if this one starts growing any weird fuzz, bluey green, nasty stuff on top, then I'll get rid of that one. And I will keep that one separate from the other three, I think. But I think these three are all looking absolutely perfect. Like, I think, not knowing what I'm talking about, that they're all very, very healthy, but they're just hungry. They've been in stasis for a little while. So let me get the kettle on. Let me start making some tea. It's going to take quite a lot of a lot of tea bags to feed all this lot. I think, do you know what? I'm looking at that one. I might just bin that one. You're quite scary. Any kombucha experts out there, please let me know what you think about that one in particular. Uh, yes, so let me get some tea made and let's feed these little beauties. And just to give you an idea of what we're working with, that is the kombucha scoby, so that's like the mother. That is the piece of bacteria that has solidified into a big slimy mass that looks and feels really quite strange. Um, and this is the bit that you need, you can buy these online. And those are the bits that you would need if you wanted to start your own kombucha batch. And if you know anyone that's making kombucha, you can ask them for some of their scoby they kind of pull apart in layers so you can whoop, <laughs> they are slimy they separate in layers so you can peel these layers apart so you can give people um, their own starter from your own kit and these constantly grow you you know you're gonna have way too many if you grow your if you make your own kombucha and if any of my friends locally are in the market for a, a scoby mother then let me know. Obviously, it's going to be a bit tricky getting one to you at the moment with lockdown, but when things are back to normal and when I have some spare, I'd be happy to pass them over to anyone I know. Uh, this is the SCOBY Hotel. So this is like my main batch. This is the most important jar uh, for me to keep alive. <laughs> Isn't it gross and kind of fascinating? I kind of like slimy stuff like this. I guess that comes from growing up on a farm. <laughs> right, let's get the kettle on. So now I'm just dissolving that sugar in the hot tea. And as you can see, these tea bags have split. So there's bits of green tea floating around everywhere in there, which is quite annoying. Um, and unfortunately, this happened the last time I used these green tea bags. And I bought these specifically for making kombucha but I threw the packaging away, so I have no idea what brand this is, so I can avoid them in the future. Damn. So you can either use green tea, white tea, oolong, or black tea. Uh, you have to use tea to make kombucha. That's what kombucha is. So you couldn't use coffee or a herb. It has to be tea for this to work. And you have to use sugar. It's the sugar that feeds the bacteria. If you didn't add the sugar, A, you wouldn't get kombucha, and B, it would probably just go mouldy. Right, now I let that tea steep for 20 minutes. That gets all that flavour and extracts out of the tea. And then I'm going to cool it down by adding the same amount of cold water. Okay, so now I'm going to pop my hot sweet tea back into the cleaned out pan. So I've just got rid of all the tea leaves that were floating around in there. So in here I've got the two litres of hot sweet tea and I'm now adding two litres of cold water just to bring that temperature down. And then I'm going to use my digital thermometer. This is my one by Therm pen. Brilliant British made uh, thermometers. And we need to get that down to 29 degrees C or lower. So I'm currently at 30.9 degrees C. So I'm just going to let this stand for a few minutes and wait for that to come down and then I can use that to feed these jars. I sound like I know what I'm talking about. I really don't. This is called winging it. 
Alrighty, we're down to 28.8 degrees C, which is perfect, apparently. So now all I need to do, oh, and also I've taken some of the kombucha out of each of these. I don't want to drink this, it smells like vinegar. I just need to see if I can bring it back to life. So I'm not entirely sure right now, but I'm probably going to bin that. So now this is down to a good temperature, so it's not going to kill off the bacteria that's in here. I'm just going to top all these jars up. Right, these three are sorted now, so I've got clean tea towels to put over the top. And I'm just going to affix them on with rubber bands. I have literally spent the last 15 minutes pontificating on what I was going to do next. So I've come up with two options. One, I go and dig over another bed that I want to plant courgettes in this year. Or two, I have a coffee and go and sit in the sun. So I have a coin <laughs> to decide. Ready? Ah, oh, coffee it is. I did cheat. I didn't even look at the coin. I want a coffee and I don't want to dig. Oh, hey, do you remember when I made those little withy hurdles the other day? I stuck... I took the clippings off the top of the plants because they were getting these adorable little fluffy catkins on them. They're like little bunny tails. They're so cute. And I knew that they'd sprout and they've started leaving and everything. But look, I popped them in a glass jar with some water and they take root. Isn't that awesome? So each of these is now a tree. How freaking cool is that? And the thing with willow is that you don't even need to put them in water. What we often do when we're down the bottom, when we're trying to spread the trees out and grow more in an area, is you just take a cutting, so you literally just cut a little branch off a tree that's already standing, and then just jab that tiny little twig into the ground. Now we do this down by the stream, so the ground is really damp down there. Whether it would work in drier ground, possibly not. But yeah, it just roots and it just grows. So now I have a vase of trees. How cool is that? Isn't nature just fantastic? So freaking cool. Ah, oh, coffee and myrtle and sassy. She doesn't normally get to come camping with us. So that Great British camp out has now raised over 90,000 pounds. Isn't that amazing? And apparently it's gonna happen again this weekend. The way that they're raising money is because a lot of us tend to go camping at Easter, instead we're donating our pitch fees, so what we'd normally spend on a campsite, we're donating that for the NHS staff, which is just lovely. So hopefully a few more of you will be up for it this weekend too, for Easter. Mwah. Are you stuck? Ow! Are you stuck? Oh, you're a terribly naughty chicken. Right, you've got to say to the camera, I must not eat rhubarb. I must not eat rhubarb. I must not eat rhubarb. You must not eat rhubarb. We're in front of the old chicken run and it's this bed here that I'm thinking I should plant courgettes in this year. And I'm just trying to convince myself that I don't need to weed it and that the courgettes will smother everything, but I think I would be much better digging this out. There's dock, there's stinging nettles. Oh, I'm just feeling really lazy today. <laughs> but saying that the sun has just come out, so maybe, maybe it would be nice to come and do some weeding. Right, I am done for the day, pretty happy with that. Seeing as I wasn't even going to bother starting it today, I've done half of that bed, but I'm also probably going to dig that little bit over there as well. I'm going to keep the rosemary, I'm going to cut that, I think that's a honeysuckle, I'm going to cut that right back, weed around the base of that rosemary. These are oak trees. Oh, these were oak trees. Um, Johnny's planted them in pots. 
and they've grown roots through the pots down into the ground so I'm kind of hopeful that he's going to sort those out um yeah so i reckon that's tomorrow's job is to get that all finished off and then that'll be ready for when we want to plant the courgettes it's really funny we grow food here every year even if it's just perennials that we never have to think about like the rhubarb for example that comes up every year we don't have to do a thing for it but the rhubarb will come up and be there every year there will always be apples on the tree we don't have to do anything even if we never pruned them ever again we'd still get apples and every year I plant my tomatoes and my chilies, no matter how busy I am, that is the one thing, or the two things, that I will always grow because I love them and I get so much pleasure from them. But when I'm busy, like last year with a TV show, I didn't have time to grow the amount of fruit and veg that I would have liked to have. But this year, I mean, yes, paying work is, has disappeared, it's dried up right now. So we've got this more time to get this stuff laid down. And I'm well aware how lucky I am to live on a farm and have access to all this space to grow what we can. And it's almost like that makes it even more important that we do this, that we grow as much food as we can. Because in a crisis, ultimately, that's what matters, isn't it? It's about feeding your family. It's about keeping a roof over their head, keeping them safe and getting food on the table. And this is just the one tiny little way that I can help my family and my neighbours and my friends to get through this. And it's funny that in a time of crisis, all the other crap, all the shiny stuff, all the toys that we all want, the latest gadgets and tech and nonsense, none of it matters. <laughs> none of it. What matters is keeping your family safe and keeping them fed. Anyway, that's it for today, lovely people. Please take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Look after those around you. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.